Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time live on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, we are the Essential Wrestling Podcast. We are so happy to have everybody with us today. Um, as you can see, we actually have two very special guests. I will introduce you to them in one second. Uh, we're just going to get right to the rundown and get things rolling here. On today's episode, uh, the Undisputed Eric got the job done at War Games. Uh, Roman Reigns trying to beat some respect in the Kevin Owens on the SmackDown. Bray and Randy are playing games on Raw uh, before their match at TLC. Uh, Gary Maheffi will be with us overseas again to discuss uh, the Hunt's big main event win on NXT UK. Brian Joy, will always, again from Minister Bell Time, he is always with us to discuss uh, New Japan. They have their tournament finals this weekend as, long, uh, as well as the Super J Cup. Um, I'm going to reveal number 16 on my top 30 favorite WrestleMania matches. We are 16 weeks away from WrestleMania. Get excited. Uh, make sure you stay tuned to the end of the show. To hear the details on how to win the Jimmy Anvil Neidhart autographed picture courtesy of Sideline Sports and WWE member Bilia. Uh, we make our picks for this week's upcoming shows presented by Minutes to Bell Time and sponsored as always by ProWrestlingPick'em.com. We're going to main event the show with an icon returning, but we're going to current jerk it, like I said, with our two very special guests. Uh, you see on the bottom part of our screen, uh, first we have... Um, the owner of the newly relaunched North American Wrestling Alliance, they are going to be debuting their relaunch show, Jingle Brawl, next Saturday night, December 19th. Uh, you can get tickets to go see the show down in Daytona Beach, or you can watch live on Fight TV. Tony Capone, uh, we heard you this morning on the Daily Wrestling News Show. How are you today? I'm doing great, thank you. How's everyone down there? Everybody's doing great. We're here having a great time. We're looking to have some fun with you guys today. Um, just real quick, uh, something you mentioned this morning on the show um, about Jingle Brawl that really uh, it hit home to me, hit me in the heart. Somebody growing up uh, in the late 80s and early 90s watching professional wrestling, my heroes, Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior. Uh, that is kind of the vibe that you're looking for going into Jingle Brawl. That's absolutely right. I mean, the formation of the company in 2020 is basically to get that old 80s, 90s vibe uh, with a new style to it. And when we talk about 80s and 90s, we're talking about the the glory days, if you want to say, where uh, there was more storylines, where there was 50 minutes of wrestling and 10 minutes of promotion, not 50 minutes of promotion, 10 minutes of wrestling. So we're going to try to get back to the basic. And it's a hard challenge for the creative team and everyone else. It's 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 a different era right now, but uh, our statistics have shown that people uh, like that old generation, and we're going to try to put it out there today. And uh, it's been great. It's been great. It's two years in the making, and uh, finally, you know, with the pandemic, that slowed us down. But uh, I'm happy to say Daytona Beach, you know, 3,000 seat arena right now with COVID. It's a 9,000 seat arena, and we're just moving forward, all positive, all optimistic about what's happening. Yeah, it sounds great. We're really looking forward to it. As you know, we're the older generation of watchers. We just had uh, a, spe a series. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, a special episode about the Survivor Series, and all we kept talking about was the 1988 or the 1990, the debut of the Undertaker. So you're definitely gonna you're gonna hit us right in the heart with this show. We are looking forward to it. And uh, joining us again, uh, not again, but joining us uh, with representing uh, the North American Wrestling Lines, um, Marina Tucker. She is the current X. I'm sorry, WXW champion, former CCW champion. Uh, big social media announcement this morning. You just signed with the company. I did. And you know, you said bring him back the 80s look. I got that going with the hair right now. <laughs> you couldn't tell. Okay, we're really looking forward to it. You know, we're the older generation of what? Sorry. Oh, there you go. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, because you were talking right there. But uh, yeah, so how did you fit into this mix, Marina? Like, where, where did this where did this come from? This is like a stage shocking within 24 hours. Yeah. Notice here. Well, I I do live in the Sunshine State of Florida, and I have heard about the show on the 19th in Daytona, and um, 
I am a very competitive person. I want to be with a company that is going to present me with challenges with competitive women. Um, I always like to go against, in my opinion, the best of the best. And Mr. Tony here approached me and be honest, could not say no. Yeah, that that's how it's awesome. We're looking forward to seeing some in-ring action. Actually, we watched, um, I actually watched uh, your match with Camille. That was on YouTube. That was very hard hitting, very nice, creative way of winning that match. Not only did you defend your title, you got the winner's purse. I appreciated that. Congrats on that big win over Camille. Well, thank you. Hey, don't so, let the blonde uh, hair yeah. fool you. I'll whip somebody's butt no matter what size they are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, real quick, before we get into final resolution, um, it was actually a very big week um, last week in professional wrestling, Tony Capone. Um, and as uh, somebody who now, uh, again, runs a, a company, this whole AEW and Impact partnership, how do you see this happening? Do you like the crossovers? Uh, feel free. Uh, tell us what you, what's on your mind here. My personal opinion, I mean, they they should be unique. Uh, they're trying to merge to get together, uh, maybe with a different look, whatever the case is. But uh, in regards to what we're doing, we want to be unique. Uh, I always said I'm not concerned about WWE and their TV and what they're doing or AEW. Uh, I probably don't even follow it uh, pretty much. But when I heard about it and everything else, it's okay. I mean, if that's what they want to do, but that's that's not my vision. I'm trying to be unique in general. Uh, and it's just like they're like rehashing a lot of the old 80s, but just rehashing characters and everything from the 80s instead of coming up with like unique characters now, but incorporate the 80s and 90s, you know, that hype of the 80s and 90s. You know, you'll never replace an Ultimate Warrior or Randy Savage, but you can have an Ultimate Warrior or Randy Savage now, you know, in this mm -hmm. generation with the same impact and personified of the 80s and 90s, you know, and uh, to just go back to taking old people back and uh, reinventing them. Uh, that's not what I'm about, you know, for the most part. But, you know, good luck to them. I mean, their thing is their thing. Uh, we're starting out, so we're the little boys right now. But, you know, let's take a look down the road in the next couple of years and uh, people be, uh, saying that, hey, you know, he had something there. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a great way of looking at it. Uh, Marina, like I said, this was this was the talk um, that, uh, that and Sting returning. Um, anything that you want to chime in on the conversation here? It just seems like uh, this got a lot of people excited, uh, a, a crossover between two companies. Uh, yeah, actually, it hits home for me because growing up at four years old, uh, WCW was the one thing I watched. And it was very rare because I grew up in Detroit, Michigan. So being uh, a diehard for the WCW, even in the North, was pretty mm -hmm. rare. And um, my two favorite wrestlers growing up um, were Sting and Goldberg. And to see him come back again, uh, I know it is a little nerve wracking because of his neck injury. You know, don't really know. You know what the status of that is, but I mean, you can't help but just be ecstatic when you see the crow makeup and see the entrance yep. and see the baseball bat. I mean, you, you almost tear up a little bit. It's just yeah, like just it, so much nostalgia. You gotta love it. And the, the, for whatever reason, the snow was a nice added look. That was right. a really nice little touch there by uh, by Mr. Tony Khan. Uh, to put that as the winter is coming. Um, so to, to get into final resolution real quick, they only have three matches booked. Just real quick, uh, we actually have a little bit of a pool here. John DeCani, um, he has an overall lead right now. He's up on Ryan Joy. I'm trailing Ryan by a little bit. He officially passed me last week. We did pretty well at winter is coming, not so well at war games. We'll get into that later. Here are our impact um, uh, statistics, The uh, our matches uh, specific for impact. Uh, our senior correspondent, John DeCani, has a one-point lead on Ryan, and I am right on their tails. The scoring <laughs> system for Final Revolution, we have five points for the heavyweight championship match, uh, three points for all other matches, one point for knockout matches. And we have to throw this in here now. Any interpromotional matches between Impact and AEW, they'll get double the points. Uh, if you get everything right and go heading, you get a bonus five. So, uh, Marina, we'll hit you up first because we're going to start with the women's division here. Started. Uh, this was announced... I believe either late last night or early this morning, but the Sea Stars are going to get some more action here in Impact on the big show. They're going to go, go back into those deep waters, I guess, if you want to keep with the puns. <laughs> um, and then uh, is it, they got some pretty big sharks, though. This is this is not going to be an easy test for the Sea Stars. What do you like in this one? 
You're right. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to go. I like the powerhouse. I, I am about the girls that are going to throw other girls around. I'm, I'm a fan of it. I've been on the opposite end of it. I know what it feels like. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to go with uh, Neve and Havoc on that one. All right. Tony Capone, can I chime in on this match? I, I'll be honest with you. I, I don't really follow too much about that. I'll leave it up to Marina, who's in, <laughs> who's in that field. Uh, like I said, I just look on occasion just to get some ideas in the creative wise. But uh, in regards to the actual uh, talent, I look more for like independent stars that I'm looking to bring on board. So I'm right. going to pass on that in general. I'll leave it up to Marina to take it from there. All right, no problem. I said the C stars, I do believe they're a part of the independent company. I guess maybe they could be on the, if they had a pretty good match, they could show up on your radar. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Never know. You never know. That's it. John McConney, we haven't heard from you. I'm sorry to, to shut you out here. We got two pretty important guests. Our senior <laughs> impact correspondent, who do you got going in this one? Oh, by all means. Uh, yeah, I, I am in agreement with uh, Marina. And I believe that uh, you can't have Havoc and Nevea move on in the tournament and then lose to someone that already has been bounced from the tournament. So as much as I enjoyed seeing the Sea Stars uh, in the past uh, week or two, I think uh, Havoc and Nevea take it here. All right, sounds good. John Smith, you want to care to make it unanimous? I'm going to go with Havoc and May as well for all those same reasons. Yeah, I don't see a way the Sea Stars win this match at all. <laughs> okay, and then we'll just go, we'll just jump right to the Impact World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, Rich Swan will be defending against Chris Bay. Uh, Chris Bay has been approaching Rich Swan for a couple weeks now, saying, put this on a marquee, it'll sell money. Um, so it's actually going to finally going to happen. Chris Bay, uh, in a losing effort last week, uh, and then the match was booked right after. That's kind of funny how he fell upwards on that one. Good for him. Um, Tony Capone, have you had your eye on Rich Swan or Chris Bay? Uh, Rich Swan, I've been looking at. I, I really think that the storyline is not going to develop right now. I think it's going to be played out a little bit more, and I think they're just teasing us a little bit, uh, just building up that hype for another couple months, uh, personally. All right, that's a great theory. All right, uh, Marina, who do you got on this one? Uh, this one's a tough one. I think all around this match is going to be very entertaining. I mean, both guys go out there and just do things that, you know, like leave your mouth on the floor. It's great. But I, I kind of see Chris Bay maybe going after this one in the really? end. Really? I'm going to call a new champion. I like your style, Marina. Mm -hmm. John Smith? Um, I respect the guts to call a new champ on uh, tonight's <laughs> show, but I'm I'm going to go with uh, with my man Rich Swan here. I don't think he's uh, ready to give that title up yet. All right, yeah, John DeCani, Marine hit the nail right on the head, and so did Mr. Capone. We have two very athletic uh, superstars here. Chris Bay really isn't wrong here. Uh, this is a money match. People will pay to see this. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would not be surprised either way just for the fact that these two are going to put on what's going to feel like an X Division match because it's going to be so highly entertaining and highly athletic. But uh, I think it's a little early for Swan to uh, drop the title. So, fingers crossed, I'm going to stick with uh, Ann Still. All right. Sounds good. Uh, now, we're going to switch gears. Like I said, we'll just go right to Jingle Brawl. Uh, Tony Capone, we have actually uh, two matches that I specifically want to talk about with you and Marina. First, the promotion again uh, next Saturday night, the 19th, down in Daytona Beach, Florida. Uh, a 7 p.m. start time if you can get there in person. If not, it will be on Fight TV. Um, that is a great deal whenever you can get on Fight TV. That is absolutely amazing. Um, we actually have a women's championship match, or I'm sorry, the female championship match. Uh, it's going to be Lindsay Snow um, against Roma Luchadora and Stormy Lee. Now, I know you mentioned Roma Luchadora this morning, Tony. Uh, can you give us some insight on these uh, female competitors here? Yeah, as everyone knows, uh, Lindsay Snow has been working uh, with AEW right now, and uh, we tried to bring the best of the best, uh, not just in the United States, but internationally. So we went with uh, Ruma Luchador, who is a uh, Chilean superstar, and uh, she's in the U.S. right now, and uh, I had my honor for a while. And uh, she was the right fit to come in uh, in the female division and someone that has that international flavor to it, uh, and it's going to be unique. And Parlay that with uh, Stormy Lee. Uh, it's going to be a great triple, you know, triple women's uh, threat match for the NAWA Female Heavyweight Championship. And uh, I'm looking forward to that to myself. I mean, they're all great competitors. And uh, I really want to see what, uh, you know, Lindsay has to bring to the table and uh, all of them. Actually, uh, it's going to be very interesting, especially with Lindsay's association right now with AEW. So I'm really curious, like, what's going to happen myself personally on that. 
we're looking forward to we see three bright young stars that we normally don't get to see on a regular basis marina um i'm gonna be, i'm gonna a little bit to my heart here i have a cat named stormy so i'm gonna pick her <laughs> but i'm gonna look to you for a little more educated analysis on this match here um who do you like in this contest and i guess the next question is do you get the winner like it's where well i'd like to hope i would get the winner um, there you, go. I, you know no matter who it is i'm ready to step up to whoever it is <laughs> uh, I have uh, been in the ring with all three women. Uh, they all do have a very different style, which I think will make a good match. Uh, I have had a little back and forth with Roma there. We're not on the best terms as of now. We uh, will be encountering each other again here in the new year. Um, so no matter who it is. But uh, personally, I think Lindsay Snow is a crazy talented woman and a scary individual who would probably strike fear into the hearts of both of those women. And, uh, you know, she turned up at blood sport and, you know, she can, she can put it down in the ring. So the other women should take notice for sure. She looks tough. Like I said, I haven't seen anything angry with her yet, but those tattoos just have me scared. You know, you don't want to preach much here. I'm sorry <laughs> if I'm saying something wrong here, but she comes off like she has a very strong presence. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, what I'm assuming I'm gonna, I don't want to jump the gun here with the with the main event of your show is going to be Tony, but I know uh, something near and dear to your heart here. Uh, I know the Gravis X Hercules Cup. We never made the change from this morning. There's going to be a battle royal in the memory of Hercules, your good friend here, um, to crown the new uh, NAWA champion. Um, I know you have a lot planned. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ray was our first NAWA heavyweight champion and actually was a two-time NAWA champion. Uh, really took me under his wing as a WWF superstar and uh, really taught me uh, a different side of the business back in those days. And I'm proud to say that we're going to have a special uh, Memorial Cup tribute to the family. Uh, his wife, Debbie, is going to be there, the kids, the grandkids, uh, the whole family pretty much for the most part, whoever is in Florida that could be there will be there. And uh, it, it's it's an honor. I mean, uh, Ray, God rest his soul, uh, taught me quite a bit of the business. And he was the foundation originally uh, with the NAWA. And he's part of the history that made the NAWA. So it was a little way paying back to uh, the family and just basically saying thank you. Thank you for what your husband and your dad and granddad did to uh, the sport of professional wrestling. And he was great. I mean, I loved him back in the days. And Great natural guy, you know, great natural beast, you know, but uh, yeah, so we're, we're excited about that. And it's turning out to be a uh, 15 to 20. I mean, it just gets going. I got guys calling that just want to be on the show just for that particular match. So I think we're up to about 20 guys right now for the Battle Royal. So I can't really tell how much, but right now it's between 15 and 20 at this point as of today. Now, I, I did a little bit of digging on the, the NAWA. You have Paul Roma helping him out as well with this, too. That kind of hits in the heart as well. Uh, I love the two of them. I and mean, I was always a Hercules fan, but I love the two of them together in power and glory. You know, I mean, Paul's not going to be in Florida. There was a commitment that he's doing right now, so he's not going to be there. Okay. Uh, but we have spoken to the family and stuff, and uh, actually we'll be speaking tomorrow also with the family on the different podcasts. But, uh, yeah, Paul's a great guy, and uh, you know, no one better than to have Paul Roma there to uh, actually present it. But it's not going to happen due to other commitments that's taking place right now with the holidays and the pandemic. Uh, but uh, we parlay that also, and it's these are things. The history of the way it's very personal to me. It's not strictly about business. And as I announced this morning, also uh, we're doing a special tribute, a uh, little memorial thing for Frank Bruiser Brody who was one of the guys that when I grew up, his style of wrestling, uh, I wish I could be like him. And uh, he was one of a kind. So I'm proud to say that Barbara Goodish is going to be there on behalf of the family with uh, some of the members of CAC to accept a special honor for Frank Bruiser Brody. So it's a unique show. It's an iconic show. And it all goes to the heart. It's all about family. And uh, Yeah, we're, we're all looking forward to it. Uh, Marina, I guess as an analyst here, uh, say we're not going to announce. I know uh, they, we don't announce the uh, the participants in this battle royal. Uh, we're kind of all Johnny Swinger fans. We're kind of make we're going to kind of lean towards him. Um, if he's in this thing, are you going to give the swing man a chance if he's in it? Hey, I mean, you know what? A battle royal is all about strategy. So if he has the best strategy, he has the best shot as anyone in there. It's all about it's a it's a mind game. So you got to come ready to play. 
Yeah, he always is, and his strategy is in that fanny pack. I hope the referees maybe <laughs> check that thing out before uh, he gets into the ring. Um, That's the, the, the highlight of wrestling fashion, the fanny pack. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he just Speaking of the 80s, 90s, like, it's like when you said that, uh, Tony Capone, when you said that you were going to go after 80s and 90s wrestling and try to bring that style back, and the fact that you have Johnny Swinger to help you to do it, he is just playing that part to a T. Uh, the Swingman Daddy is one of our favorites. On top of that, I mean, we just announced a couple of days ago that the show is starting with uh, Cahagas versus Gangrel. And I'm personally looking forward to that match. I mean, uh, two great competitors, similar styles but different. And uh, that's personally one of my favorites of the night. I mean, the whole thing is great, but that initial match with Cahagas and uh, – Gangrel, that's gonna be that's gonna be great. I mean, I'm really looking forward to that particular match. Yeah, the 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 broods. Yes, how do you not love the brood and Gangrel and all that? Z now we're, we're going back to everything. Uh, Marina, is there anything else? I know we're uh, we kind of ran through this pretty quickly. We want to keep it on a little bit longer. Is there anything else uh, that you want to bring to our attention? Any other matches that you want to uh, spotlight? Um, anything that you're happy to? You know, you're happy you're, you're within 24 yeah. hours of being signed and. Here we go. Yeah, I'm just saying um, for the 2021 year, it, it's going to be a hell of a ride. And I, I'm really excited for it. I'm really excited for this opportunity. Uh, and like I said, my my goal as a professional wrestler, I just want to have the best quality matches I can have. You know, I want to be the ones that people are going to watch this, you know, on YouTube, on Fight TV. I want people to be like, hey, I want to watch this Marina Tucker match. And, that, and that's what's most important to me. You know, I pride myself on consistently training with the best uh, uh, you know, I work with, you know, off of the wild Samoan, I work with Ricky Santana, I work with Chris Silvio, you know, I'm always grinding away, always working different styles, whether it's, you know, Lucha, American, you know, even a little bit of watching the Japanese style a little bit. I'm always just trying to, you know, bring something different to the table. And I can promise you and Mr. Tony that I am something different and I hope everybody's ready. We're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to seeing in ring uh, action in the NAWA, uh, and hopefully it's going to be sooner or later. I know Tony, you said uh, Jingle Brawl uh, that that's up first, but that is one hundred percent not going to be last. Uh, you have exactly. two more shows booked. I'll tell you one thing. I mean, uh, in regards to Marina right now, and we weren't going to say anything yet, but Marina's going to be on our second show, which is February thirteenth in North Carolina. And uh, she's actually going to face the champion from Jingle Ball. So it wasn't going to be announced yet, but you guys got the platform. So you got the inside scoop. <laughs> there we go. Is, is, all right, we're making our picks right now. John the Connie, who are you taking at Nova <laughs> Moore from the female champions match? Hey, Marina Tucker. There you go. John hey. Smith is going to make it unanimous. <laughs> Same. Good. Go, Marina Tucker. Well, that not, is absolutely like, great no, news. You the got the word. You'll see me ever again. <laughs> That's it. And we, we we would love to have you guys back on before no remorse. Um, I know Tony T is going to stop by um after the show, um next week with uh Ryan or two weeks. I'm sorry with Ryan on the the Daily Wrestling News Show. But uh, we can't thank you guys enough uh for coming on, being our first ever guests on our first ever uh, live show on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. This is a historic show, um, and we hope we wish you the best of luck um, in your show next Saturday night. Again, I'll throw up the graphic again. Next Saturday night, where'd it go? There it is. Uh, we have Jingle Brawl from down in Daytona Beach, Florida, uh, December 19th at 7 p.m. The doors are at 6 if you can get there in person. If not, if you're stuck up here in the cold weather of New Jersey, like John, John, and myself, uh, we will be watching on Fight TV, and uh, we will be looking forward to it. Uh, well, thank Tony you so Capone, much for having us. Congratulations, by the way, too. Oh, thank you very much. And apparently, this, this Apple thing, I think it's going to take off. I'm not sure, but I heard it's going to be uh, good things with this Apple product. So <laughs> They're on something, to those guys. <laughs> I think they know what they're doing over there. Maybe. Uh, Tony Capone, anything else that you want to bring to our attention before we let you go? I'm uh, just excited about everything happening. Uh, you know, a little bit nervous, but it's nerves of excitement. So we're just about a week away, just a little over a week, and uh, just can't wait to uh, get that done, get over the holidays, and you know, get right back down to Raleigh and start doing North Carolina and going from there. I can't wait. Okay, and with again, Marina and Marina on the show in February, how could you go wrong? No, exactly. You just you just got three new watches. Yes, exactly. We're we're going we're going we're going to take this ride with you, Tony. 
Uh, just so you know, and Marina, we're gonna we're gonna ride along in the passenger seat with you and watch you every step of the way. Thank you so, so much. Thank you much, guys. No problem. Best of luck to everything, and we will see you guys soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. All right, so there we go. We got to see some breaking news. See, you know what? I knew at some point we're going to break some very important news, and it just happens to be the NAWA female championship match has been set at no remorse in North Carolina. North, Where's Ryan Joy when we need him? North Carolina! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, you guys got to give me a sweat and uh, switch you guys around. There we go. So the name planes match up. Uh, we did actually gloss over a match um, that is going to happen, a final resolution. We'll just hit that up real quick. Ethan Page, um, he's still looking to get his uh, tag team championship match. Uh, I'm just all over the place with my graphics right now. Everything got flustered. There we go. Ethan Page and Carl Anderson is going to go at it. If Ethan Page wins... Um, the North will get their tag team championship match uh, that they were supposed to get originally. Again, I don't know why they're fighting over this, but you know, be that as it may, you know, impact will be impact. <laughs> uh, John DeCani, uh, what do you got? Carl Anderson is in it. That's an offer with Ethan Page, not doing too well, and that's one of those losses is uh, to the nominal one. <laughs> I uh, give me give me the Karate Man. Uh, I think they're gonna they're gonna not that they don't you know under normal circumstances haven't already earned their rematch, but I think if that's the way he's got to lock it down, I want to see the good brothers of the North again. All right, sounds good, John Smith. Uh, I'm gonna go with the machine gun on this one. All right, any particular reason why? We... No, no, I just because. <laughs> All right, <laughs> just because they don't call you the best color man in the business, John. Smith. Uh now I'm gonna go with the machine gun as well. He's Carl Anderson. Just I just feel like he's a he's a better singles wrestler, I guess. I know Ryan Joy likes to shoot off Carl Anderson um in his singles matches um uh over in New Japan. He was a phenomenal singles uh wrestler before he met up with Doc Gallows. Uh real quick just to go over the rest of what's happening on Impact tonight. Um again. We were all shocked, and Kenny Omega, and we'll get into it maybe a little, dive a little bit deeper with Ryan Joy in the AEW segment, but Kenny Omega uh, snuck away with the AEW World Championship, and as he left, he's saying that uh, he's gonna, they're going to be on impact. Don Callis said, and it was made official two days later, um, and all of a sudden, here we go, the AEW champion is appearing tonight on impact. Uh, John DeConi, any thoughts, positives, negatives, anything um, that you want to shed light on with this? Uh, well, certainly uh, positive uh, is going to be in the ratings, I would imagine. Uh, as uh, as you and uh, Ryan were discussing this morning, uh, the, the numbers for impact were, what, in the 150 to 160, uh, 150, 60,000 households. Uh, you know, I think that number is going to at least double, if not triple. So, uh, you know, just getting the rub from Kenny being on there. So what exactly they're going to do, how it's going to play out, God only knows, uh, you know, how much interplay there'll be between the companies. Once again, who knows? But, I mean, you've gotten the wrestling world excited about this. So that can, that can only be a good thing. Uh, yeah, I hope so. Everyone, everyone's got these – everyone's coming up with these wild uh, scenarios. You know, everyone's immediately circled Abaddon and Sue Young, so to, you know, just as an example. Uh, I just we at least need them to go nose to nose and look each other up and down, a la Rock Austin. Uh, yeah, excuse me, uh, Rock Rock Hogan. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I need I at least need that face off. John Smith, uh, your thoughts about this? Uh, like I, I hope it's well. I mean, I was not happy about John Moxley losing or the way he lost, but then once Don Callis showed us that it was going to be some sort of crossover, you know, it, it made it all worth it in my opinion, because now we're going to have some, some, I mean, this was the, a, like I said on Ryan's podcast, uh, it was a bigger swerve, I think, than Sting. Oh yeah. You know, just, I, I couldn't believe what I was hearing at the end of that show. I was so happy about it. And you say, oh, listen, you know, I'll, I'll get this thing. I'll say my piece on Sting later, or whatever. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan, but that, that's me. I, that's, that's my fault. And I'm, I'm different than everybody. Hey, I'm, I'm right there with. Yeah, but it's, I, I get, I know who Sting is. I get who Sting it is, and I know what Sting has done. 
And the fact that this overshadowed his return, John Smith, you're exactly right. That is absolutely nuts how this completely overshadowed Sting. Um, this is all everybody was talking about. And I was on Twitter for about an hour after the show ended, and everybody was – the North was picking fights with FTR. I mean, it was crazy. Um, just real quick, I, I did some – it's a note-taking uh, last week. Uh, just a couple crossovers that have happened, I guess, um, throughout the course of wrestling history. I know Impact is a little notorious from it. They used to have these uh, these Super X Cup tournaments. They used to get rep wrestlers from AAA – and from uh, Pro Wrestling Noah over in Japan, amongst other indie companies. So Impact does this. Um, they had a they had a uh, a thing with New Japan. I, uh, you know, they have agreements with New Japan. Like I said, Chris Bay this Saturday night and TJP will both be in the Super J Cup, um, which is a New Japan promotion. But they will be representing Impact. Um, the Good Brothers contract allegedly they have the ability to go to New Japan and fight whenever they want to, if, if possible. Oh, uh, and not to mention probably the biggest thing, uh, crossover between those two, uh, Kurt Angle as the IWGP heavyweight champion while he was TNA champion. Um, there was a whole thing back in 2007 with Brock Lesnar. Um, they asked, uh, Impact, can we steal Kurt Angle to beat Lesnar? And Angle's like, sure. And all they shows up one week on Impact, and he's got two belts. And then they had a match with Samoa Joe, who was the X Division champion and the tag champion. They had a whole five title belt match that Kurt Angle won. Uh, so that was actually a pretty crazy time. But, you know, like said, Kurt Angle was IWGP and TNA heavyweight champion at the same time and showed up on TNA pay-per-views. Um, Impact recently, two years ago, um, it was WrestleMania weekend down in New Orleans. They fought Lucha Underground. So uh, it was Pentagon, Phoenix, Brian Cage, Willie Mack, Ty Valkyrie, uh, Jeremiah Crane, who was Sammy Callahan, uh, they were all on Team Lucha Underground, and they all went to Impact after that, after Lucha Underground. So they actually, Impact actually snuck a lot of the Lucha Underground uh, guys under that, and including Pentagon, Brian Cage, and Sammy Callahan are all former Impact Heavyweight Champions. Ty Valkyrie's a former Knockouts Champion, the longest training of all time, and oh, Willie Mack has the greatest entrance music in wrestling today. So there was a lot that came out of that show. Um, AEW obviously has their partnership with the NWA. That's well aware. AEW and AAA, Kenny Mega is their AAA champion. They have to plus um, the first couple of uh, pay-per-views that AEW had before Dynamite started. Uh, the Lucha Bros and the Young Bucks were fighting over the AAA Tag Team Championships because there were no champions in AEW at that time. Um, and other promotions, New Japan and Ring of Honor, we all know that story. They actually have a pay-per-view every year. Uh that I didn't know oh, the war of the worlds. They've been doing that since 2014 plus ring of honor participates at wrestle kingdom every year. So they have had a solid working relationship. Um, AEW and new Japan ring of honor. Is, John Moxley is the IWPG United States champion. So that partnership's right there. Not to mention Kenny Omega, Cody Rhodes and the young bucks are pretty much just a phone call away being like, Hey, you guys want to do something And new Japan's like, sure. Why not? You know? Um, so, like, the big thing is, like, oh, well, WWF doesn't do this. Well, WWF did do this back in 1997 when they sent Jerry Lawler to ECW to get trash thrown at him. Then they, and then ECW responded by sending Rob Van Dam and Sabu to Raw, who hence the moniker Mr. Day Monday Night. Uh, that came into play. But Vince has done this before. So, I mean, I know he has a good working relationship with Paul Heyman back then. I'm sure that working relationship is not the same as with Cody Rhodes. So Cody, you know, threw gasoline on that fire in front of that bridge, you know, since they're having all these trademark wars, you know, who those things are going to work together. So with WWE, we pretty much just have to settle with Raw vs. SmackDown at Survivor Series and then NXT and NXT UK at Worlds Collide. Those are the two things, you know, promotional that they do with themselves. Um, and then that brings us to today, Impact and AEW, when you have two executive vice presidents who consider themselves family and who are both from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, along with Chris Jericho, they're going to want to work together. So um, <laughs> hopefully this just works out and goes forward. I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. That's my rant. I've been talking way too long. Let's get <laughs> back to the impact matches for tonight because the knockouts championship tournament uh, is still going on. Jordan Grace and Jazz, hell of a match, hell of a team. They defeated uh, Renee Michelle and Killer Kelly um, after Jazz hit the face buster on Renee Michelle. Um, so they get Havoc and Nevaeh in the next round. Tasha steals 
and Kiara Hogan, uh, they're going to fight the winner of tonight's matchup. And this is a very, very, very intriguing matchup. This was the match that caught my eye when this bracket came out. Um, Deanna Prazo and Kimberly, they're going to fight Ty Valkyrie and Rosemary. Um, and then you know, even further from last week, uh, Deanna Prazo and Kimberly, they lured out Sue Young so that Father James Mitchell can abduct her, uh, uh, abduct her with the undead bridesmaids. Um, so Father James Mitchell is going through with his side of the deal. You're kind of wondering what he's going to ask for in return. I'm actually looking forward to see where that's going. That's going to where we, uh, you'll peel the layers off of the Deanna Perrazzo character and see what she's made about. But, John DeConi, this is a very uh, intriguing match. Who do you got in this one? Yeah, I mean, uh, you would think with the, the champion being involved uh, that, that they'd be the favorite, but I just have a feeling that between Father James Mitchell and, in fact, we've already seen a split between Susie and Sue Young, so Suzy could still be hanging around. I think something wacky happens here, and I'm going to go with Ty and Rosemary. Okay, John Smith, uh, who do you got in this one? Um, I don't know. That was pretty convincing. I was going to say Deanna, but I'm going to switch it to to yeah to Rosemary. Yeah, I'm All right, go I'm gonna that. I'm gonna stick with Jersey on this one. I'm gonna go Jersey versus Jersey in the semifinals. Uh, it just seems to me that I, I think Sue Young's out of the picture for the moment. I think that you know if you get abducted, hopefully maybe you know Mitchell will keep her for more than a week. Like I don't, I don't know, she'll break away just to stir over Deanna and Kimber. Uh, the big thing that came uh, from last week when Larry D was confronted about the shooting of Bravo. Uh, he kind of mentioned the AC that he was being set up. So I don't think Rosemary is completely out of the woods here yet on this whole uh, Bravo Virgin wedding day shooting story. Uh, so I'm going to go with uh, Deanna and Kimberly in that one. Uh, in other news, Ken Shamrock got suspended 30 days for punching D.O. Brown. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, the Mortimer Mercedes Machine Guns, they defeated Triple XL last week with an, uh, with an impressive double suplex on AC, followed by that neckbreaker splash double team on Larry D. So part one of the Motor City Machine Guns, uh, I think I just slipped again. Motor City Machine Guns. Um, three-part plan. At, yeah, the three-part plan. The, the first part is done. Triple XL, check. The next step is the North. Ethan Page is busy fighting with the Good Brothers. So Chris Saban is going to take on Joss Alexander tonight. Uh, John Smith, who do you like in this one? Uh, I like Josh Alexander. You know, he's just he's just badass. I, I I don't see him losing. All right, John DeConi. Yeah, I agree. I, I think uh, once they uh, get together and uh, do it uh, with all four of them in the ring, I could see them machine guns taking it. But I think uh, one on one, I think Alexander takes us. See, everyone's forgetting and sleeping on what Chris Saban has done in his life as a singles competitor, multiple, multiple time X Division champion. Back when the X Division title was like the AJ style Samoa Joe, and you know, Saban was running that division when they were still around. Not to mention he's a former heavyweight champion. So I'm going to go with Saban. Uh, not to mention that's the Super X, uh, the Super X Cup tournament that I mentioned. Here's. <laughs> So he won the first ever tournament. It was an episode-long tournament, and at the end was Wednesday, Bloody Wednesday. And I say it like that because it was a Dusty Rhodes creation when he was in TNA. It was five on five, and one, and Johnny Swinger was in that match. So that was actually see uh, Johnny Swinger a part of Wednesday, Bloody Wednesday. <laughs> uh, Rohit Raju, he defeated Crazy Steve to retain the X Division title after an amazing match. Uh, Rohit Raju held the ropes for the win. Um, so here we go. We're chasing Sam Martino. We're at day one. Today is 116 uh, with no title match in sight at the moment. I'm sure you will have one coming up this weekend, and I'm sure that they will announce it tonight. I forgot to take the Jingle Brawl down logo. I hope people are paying attention and will watch Jingle Brawl on January 19th. But then uh, backstage, Brian Myers came in, threw in his two cents, called TJP a loser, and here we go with these two. And this is a very interesting matchup, John DeCon. It certainly is. Uh, Myers, you know, I, I, I don't have, you know, uh, the Hawkins character was very entertaining. 
but uh, I haven't seen him wrestle with the attitude of I can win. So it's going to be very interesting to see how he wrestles now, kind of on a roll, kind of in charge of his own uh, future. And like he, when you saw Hawkins, you knew something was going to happen and he was going to lose. So mm-hmm. going into this thinking that, you know, just the fact of thinking that uh, uh, Myers could win uh, makes it that much more entertaining. And we know TJP is going to stretch him in some kind of crazy way. So it's going to be very entertaining. But I'm going to go with Myers on this one. Yeah, Myers, he's 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 sneaky. He uh you know, he calls himself the world uh the most professional professional wrestler. Uh he cheats like to no end though, John Smith. So I'm gonna take Myers on this one as well. Yeah, make it unanimous. All righty. Uh Johnny Swinger and Cody Diener, their uh rematch was interrupted by Eric Young and Joe Doring. Um Eric Young kept on repeatedly saying that this is their world, but then you go backstage and Cody was talking to cousin Jake. Uh, this hurt Cody a lot more than uh, what we realized. I guess Eric Young trained him, and they went the road together, and Cody Diener just went off about how upset he was about this. Um, so they're going to go at it tonight um, in a very, very personal uh, matchup, at least for Cody Diener. Eric Young just doesn't seem to care about anything right now. So it uh, seems like Cody Diener's heart is on the line, John Smith. Yeah, he's going to put out a good effort, but I think Eric Young is going to take him out when it's, when it's all said and done. All right, John DeCani. Yeah, I have to agree. I, I think he uh, he may earn Eric's uh, respect, but I don't think he's going to earn the victory. Okay, I will jump in on that as well. Follow by wants his money back from uh, Tasha Steeles and Kara Hogan. Uh, they didn't have it on them. Wink, wink, hint, hint. Uh, <laughs> next week, they'll be all Gucci and give it back to him. So stay tuned to that tonight. Um, and then what will be the main event tonight, a preview of the championship match uh, for final resolution between Swan and Bay. It will be a tag match with Rich Swan and Willie Mack to go uh, against Chris Bay and Moose. Moose recently threatening Chris Bay um, that if he happens to beat Rich Swan at final resolution, that Moose will just completely sh- uh, strip the belt off him uh, with a threat. I think I'm sure he said it a lot tougher than I did. Uh, John DeConte, what do you got on this one? Uh, I hate to do this, Tom, but give me Bay and Moose with uh, Willie Mack taking the fall. <laughs> exactly. John Smith. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> Willie Mack has not had a very good year since losing that uh, X Division title. So, Okay, so I know you got a new setup and a new rolly chair and a new microphone. Are you just like testing the distance of your new microphone right now in the chair? <laughs> I can't get comfortable, man. What do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, how about this? We're going to give you guys a break. John, go get another chair. Make yourself comfortable. Go get some groceries. Say hi to your loved ones. Uh, we are going to bring in Gary Mihefi from overseas. Uh, let me get that off. Boom. Gary, top of the evening to you, pal. Sorry we got you on a little bit late today. We had some very special guests before. Absolutely. But I just have to say thank you, though, because you did – at the start of the show, say that there was going the main event, there would be an icon returning, and I'm touched. I'm <laughs> touched that, that that you would refer to me as the icon guy, Mahaffey. So I think from now on, I'm on my screen. I'd like that as my name tag. Uh, the know, icon I, guy, Mahaffey. The, the icon, Gary Mahaffey. <laughs> I love it. I you're more of an icon to me than Sting is, Gary. So. <laughs> Uh, we had a big main event, uh, tag team main event, a uh, very personal rivalry that's been going, that's been set up for months. Uh, the Hunt got the win over Mark Andrews and Flash Morgan Webster, uh, and Eddie Dennis played the part as we kind of figured he would. Yeah, I mean, the wrestling fan of me, I've even written on my page, I was like, the wrong team lost, I was like, which does sound terrible. I'm a massive um, Andrews and, and Webster fan. I think they're incredibly oh, yeah. underrated and they're brilliant. But as a match, I mean, it really did go. There was a lot of innovative offense, a lot of innovative uh, dives and counters and stuff but it worked really well, it fed really well as you said, it's been built up for a long time with Eddie Dennis um, being there and obviously he got involved uh, at the end of it um, to set up towards the finish but it was a really really good match, I mean Primate and Boar Wild Boar, I mean played their part too, they played the, the heavy hitting suplex stuff in it as well, it was a really good match That DVD into the power bomb. Uh Wild Boar times that perfectly the yeah. two times i've seen it they that looks 
very innovative. Very, I, I, they won me over with that move and that match. I mean, not that I was against the hunt, but uh, they they showed me something last Thursday. Yeah, yeah, they really did. I mean, it was as you say, it was really good, and it was almost like the four guys were like, okay, go out, you've got your time, just do what you do. And the four of them, I mean, it was just, it was really slick, really well done. Eddie Dennis played his part well too on the outside. He didn't get involved too much, uh, but it was just, it was all all around. It was a great show from them all. Yeah, just enough to get the win. That's pretty much he knew he was going to do it. He was hoping they didn't interfere too much to ruin the match. So absolutely. Uh, Joe Coffey, uh, he proved his arm is his kingdom. Uh, a nice win with the best of the Bells clothesline over Alexander Wolf. Yeah, two big boys having a big boys match. I mean, they were yeah. laying it in. <laughs> I mean, they really were. Um, but it was great. As we've said before, because they've given Wolf um, a good push and they've given, they've given him – um, some good prominence on the show, but obviously they're putting some steam again behind Joe um, and Gallus, and they really are. So with him, with him coming out on top, it was very hard hitting them, very stiff, but a really big win for him as he moves back up through the ranks again. Yeah, so he he got us in great shape uh, during the COVID. Yeah. Uh, it's been absolutely really well done with Joe Coffey. Uh, Rampage Brown, uh, I guess, had his second uh, stepping stone match against uh saxton hutchley uh before we get into the match and rampage brown it took me a while to figure out who saxon huxley reminds me of um here's a picture of saxon now it's not the full body picture uh he's a very tall guy he's actually got very big feet almost like goofy looking feet Can't mm -hmm. see, and then it finally hit me he looks like the big monster from the muppets i mean i've never seen them in the same room at the same time so yeah. i mean <laughs> Could easily be, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, this you know, usually step one is Jack Starr, step two is Saxon Huxley in the NXT UK pecking order. Rampage Brown, 2 0. Yeah, I mean, as, as we've said a few weeks ago, it's been really good to see Rampage coming in and, and, and being given this shot um, in NXT UK. And obviously, they've set it up for a week or two with their backstage stuff at the Performance Center or whatever when they were in, doing their weights. Yeah. Um, and again, it was another big boy match between two big boys. It was hard hitting as well. Um, but say it was good to see Rampage, and he seems to be set for big things on the brand. So, uh, speaking of getting into it in the uh, performance center, uh, the weight area, uh, Piper Niven, Piper Niven, and Ginny got into it. Yeah. Uh, so they had they had to be pulled apart. Uh, Piper is just not happy that Ginny uh, interfered. Um, in our championship match, cost of the match, and then staying in the women's division, um, Alf, 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 Valkyrie, that's still, Alf, 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 Nina Samuels at or somebody, you know, like. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been good with, with what they've done with Aoife because obviously, and they, they do keep saying in, in commentary and stuff about how she's unbeaten and she hasn't lost since we've come back and all this. So they're obviously putting that in there. So it's actually, it's really good to see that you've got, like even from before the Piper Nevin, Kaylee Ray title match, you had Jenny going for Piper Nevin. So you have the women's, that feud going one direction you've got another one going the other direction and i can see that maybe once it gets once the new year hits in uh, and things get going again i would say that aifa is going to be one that they're going to be pushing in towards having a title match down the line so fingers crossed for her she's a great girl great wrestler yeah. so we're hoping. We've, been, we've been talking her up for weeks now i just like all right let's let's throw somebody you know with some credibility at her i guess yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. speaking of somebody with credibility the nxt cruiserweight champion uh He's going to go the open challenge route. Uh, he just does not care. He just wants to defend the title. Um, so he is going to start that uh, on Thursday afternoon, Thursday night, your time. Um, so we're going to add him, all right? We have the Defeat Row Heat Challenge here. Uh, we're going to put Jordan Devlin on the bottom uh, as, our, as, as our two active uh, open challenge competitors here. So, uh, you know, John Cena has a record with 10, but we're going we're gonna to track Jordan Devlin, even though it is on the Defeat Rohit Challenge. Maybe we'll change the graphic. Uh, <laughs> but like I said, you know, Rohit Raju, uh, he's chasing Bruno San Martino. We're watching history here. But um, any ideas on who uh, might be challenger number one? 
I've had a, I've had a thought as to whether what they'll do is with Kenny Williams because obviously a few weeks ago um, Amir Jordan had his match that whether Kenny Williams comes in has a match and Devlin then gives off and says is this all you've got give me better than this mm-hmm. type of type of thing nothing against Kenny Williams but obviously with them playing up the injury and stuff so I wonder whether somebody like that will do it or whether they'll have a a big name surprise come in off the bat um, I'm just a wee bit over two five so I couldn't quite. Um, meet that limit, unfortunately, but uh, <laughs> but uh, but um, one of my legs is about two five, probably. But um, <laughs> but the, but the, no, I reckon that'll be it'll be something like that along the lines of a Kenny Williams or something like that that will have the match, and then at the end of it, Devlin will keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing, and then until they can maybe start to bring ones in from um, America and from NXT in. And maybe build it up to some sort of words collide type thing again, which would be great. Yeah, Ryan and I talked about it this morning briefly on the Daily Wrestling News show. Kenny Williams was the one that came to mind as well because he had the altercation in the hallway. And the only reason yeah. why he didn't get the shot is because he, he was hurt. I'm sure it was uh, uh, he's okay, uh, yeah. but he just wasn't medically cleared that week. And Amir Jordan was. Um, but we also threw in, I, I know they're a great tag team, but we just mentioned that Mark Andrews against Jordan Devil would be awesome. Flash Morgan oh. Webster to answer like. They can do some things uh, here, to, but there's the the, the 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 roster of wrestlers under 205. Um, you know, is it those two? You got Jack Stars, I guess. I don't know. They lost Travis yeah. Banks, which hurt. Um, I mean, more, Flash Morgan Webster or Mark Andrews should be great. I mean, because they had obviously they'd been across to PWG and stuff and done a lot of things in the states before uh, NXT UK kicked off, and they are genuinely Mark Andrews in particular. I know Uncle Dave is a big, uh, big fan of him as well. It's like he is incredibly underrated. Mark Andrews is very innovative. I mean, they would both be brilliant. So they would be good calls too. That would be great if he just gave him fifteen minutes and said, "Go ahead, boys, do your thing." It would just be outstanding. Um, and then the moment I've been waiting for, Gary. Uh, <laughs> in, in over sessions. Uh, no, M. Dar is uh, he's debuting his talk show on Thursday. Uh, I know we discussed about it last week. Uh, it. it it's got to be him. He's got to be his own first guest, and then maybe whoever his next feud is, it'll interrupt him for being an idiot. But that's just <laughs> uh, a kid. Also, minutes to bell time. Some joker from minutes to bell time dot com said a kid. That would be another one. Uh, <laughs> a kid uh, just fresh off his Heritage Cup uh, finals win. Uh, standing on this, the same joker said Kaylee Ray was going to. I guess she, she's she's well under two hundred five. <laughs> so. Um, but Gary, that's uh, that'll do it today. I know we got to cut you a little bit short. Uh, no, with okay. Guess, but it was well worth it to have them on. It's always worth it to have the icon Gary Mahefi on <laughs> as well. We appreciate you staying up late with us, Gary. No, not a problem, my friend. Anytime, it's always a pleasure. So, okay, so we're I'm gonna do this. Boom, do this correctly this time. Gary, have a great night. So we're gonna bring uh, John Smith, John the County, back in. Um, Gentlemen, uh, John, did you get a more comfortable chair? No, I'm in the same chair. It's just no, I'm. It's not that I'm not I'm not comfortable physically. It's just I'm not used to this whole setup, so I'm not like gotcha. you know, You're not okay. emotionally comfortable. I need a safe <laughs> space. I went, I went and had some peanut butter Ritz crackers, and now I'm gonna try to settle down. Okay, uh, but we're gonna leave with you right now with uh, with war games. Uh, that, that was a lot of surprises we watched together. We uh, we didn't do so well in this show with our picks. We'll get to that in a second. But um, what we were calling with the Undisputed Era, we thought maybe it was time to end it with them. Uh, instead, they go out and won. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd like to say that I wish we saw it coming, but there was no way to see that coming. It was almost like... Like it was uh, like they were seniors in high school or something, and they were they were on their way to the prom, you know, in that in that video where they um, where they went out to eat and whatnot. It was like they were they were living up their their best memories, and then they're gonna come out for one more one more last thing, and then boom, Bobby Fish turns on them or something like that. But it was not to yeah. be. I mean, we're gonna get the undisputed era for a little while longer. Who knows how long? I don't know. I mean, I'm. I figured they would end up on the main roster at some point. I guess I do still call it the main roster because in some ways it is. Yep. Um, but that being said, I mean, I loved the match itself. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, very surprising. Yeah, and a shout out to Pat McAfee. Uh, K Fabe still exists. He showed up to his podcast uh, Monday morning in a neck brace. Uh, so he sold War Games. He did a fantastic. <laughs> Uh, you can call it a swanton. Some people call it, just call it a flip. Uh, but he jumped off the top of the cage. So that was, uh, that was actually pretty cool. Um, yeah, so the, the Undisputed Era, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm happy they stayed together. I had nothing against them. I just thought maybe this would be a good time for them to do it. Um, because it's been three years now since, it's been, it's been a long time. So, um, with the women though, this was an even more of a shocker, John DeConnie. Um, I believe the question that John Smith asked me, like, what has Raquel Gonzalez ever done? Uh, <laughs> being, and then and it, he got his answer. Uh, oh, my God. Like, that was the last thing I probably expected to happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, this well, – the, the women's uh, end here was just an absolute spot fest. Uh, everything from uh, – you know, uh, the EO getting locked out, so climbing the cage and putting herself in a trash can before dropping in and taking out the whole crew. Uh, uh, later, Tony Storm hits Storm Zero on a trash can on Ember. Uh, yeah, Dakota landing uh, double stomp, coup de gras, whatever you want to call it, on EO again later in the trash can again, and then had trouble getting her out of it because she bent <laughs> it up so bad to attempt it in. Uh, but it, it all uh, it all boils down towards the end. Uh, EO and Rhea set up a ladder uh, bridged between the two uh, uh, rings. Meanwhile, uh, Shotzi hits a swanton off of the other ladder uh, onto Candice, uh, who had a chair in between them. So it's hard to tell who took the, the worst of that. Uh, but then Raquel. Gets her hands on uh, EO after EO attempts Arana off of she kind of bridged between the two rings once again on like the second turnbuckle. Uh, EO went for Arana, Raquel just straight powered out of it and lifted her back up for that one arm power bomb, broke the ladder, dragged her off of it to, to uh, pin her on the diamond plate in between the rings, and uh, Team Larray gets the victory. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you right now who got the worst of uh, that spot with Candice LeRae. It was Candice. Uh, Johnny put on uh, social media. They were both in the hospital after the show. Candice, I, uh, I believe they, uh, she broke her arm. So we, uh, she might be missing some action. Uh, well, she's definitely going to, from what I heard. Uh, even if it's not broken, they're going to give her some time off the heel. So uh, Candice definitely took it. Johnny got some stitches in his match. Uh, we'll run through that real quick. Johnny Gargano, he actually uh, he regained he's now a three-time NXT North American champion. Uh, he got the win. Uh, plenty of ghost faces around at ringside uh, to help them out. Priest fought them off as much as he could. Uh, one of them turned out to be awesome theory like we, uh, like we assumed. Uh, so Johnny Gargano got his belt back, and he got stitched up. He was right next to his, his wife uh, in the waiting room. I guess he had some stitches in his lip or something. Not a broken arm, but I guess I guess he got to fix it. Um, then John DeCon, I'm sorry, John Smith uh, matched that uh, – Hard hitting, very, very tough, and it was a really, really great match between Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher. Yeah, man, that was definitely my favorite match of the night. Um, I mean, it happened right after the women's war games, so you know they had to kind of calm you down a little bit with some mat wrestling. But even that stuff was was rugged mat wrestling. There was, you know, they weren't just holding on to each other; they were digging elbows into ribs and chins into the back of their heads and stuff like that you know thatcher ended up getting his his cauliflower busted open which looked pretty badass <laughs> and um yeah i mean other than that man it was thatcher had the upper hand for a long time but then you know champa got the win of course and yeah, you know, he hit Willow's was, bell, but yeah, he hit Willow's bell and after the match they were kind of both sitting on the apron just like staring at each other like all right you're all right, Griffin. You know, I, I, I was thinking Peter Griffin. You're all right, Griffin. So they uh, it's a mutual show of respect between the two after the match, and that was pretty cool to see. Uh, Dexter Loomis defeated Cameron Grimes with silence with the strap. Uh, Cameron Grimes actually used uh, – he had some kind of trick up his sleeve that he really didn't get a chance to use. Um, he said they had to use the match he wanted or the strap that he wanted, uh, not the official one the referee had, but uh, – we got, hello, hello, everyone. All right, this is Dave from Ohio. He's watching as well. Dave uh, Cubic. I like, all right. Rubik's Cube. I like that. Okay. 
So, uh, hey, hello, everybody from Jersey from the Essential Wrestling Podcast. We are glad that you are watching. Hope you're laughing along right with us. Um, and then uh, two things that uh, that came out of uh, Sunday night. Uh, the clock is ticking again. Uh, we saw a video package uh, for Carrying Cross, and it's it's amazing. Uh, just one small video package, exactly, and the whole the whole NXT universe just shook. Like, uh oh, here we go. Here comes trouble again. Um, so this is uh, how we did. We didn't do too well at War Games. Myself, John DeCani, and Tyler. Uh, thank God for Tommaso Ciampa. Um, John Smith, uh, he went two for three. Ryan Joy, he actually he uh, went out on a limb and picked the Undisputed Era. Uh, so he got the, the the ten points for that. So he jumped up uh, big. Uh, he got about nine points on John Smith. He got ten on all of us. So kudos to Ryan Joy. And then uh, the only thing that we have booked uh, for Wednesday is uh, Finn Balor shot a promo. All eyes are back on the Prince. He seems ready to roll. We have our champion back. And uh, it's time to get at it. TikTok. TikTok. Rewinding to last night on Monday Night Raw, which just so happens uh, – never mind. I'll save that as the, uh, the segue. Uh, Randy Orton started the show. Um, he was going to invade the Firefly Funhouse. Uh, it never ended up happening. Uh, but he actually did up there. They said they're going to start playing games, and there was a game show where you could win the, the decomposed body of the Friendship Frog, which – you know what? He does. He's better than most. That was a reoccurring. That now he's technically a reoccurring character. So good for him. <laughs> I have the wrong name for it. So, damn it. so uh, they ended up having a match later on in the night. Uh, anything that Impact can do, Vince can do better, right? Because they the lights went out, uh, and Bray Wyatt. And it was a very qu uh, quick light switch. Uh, turned into a fiend, and uh, dropped RKO. Put him out with the mandible claw. So that will be to be continued at TLC when Randy actually fights the Fiend and not Firefly Bray. Uh, John DeConi, there was a handicap match. Uh, Styles, The Miz, and Morrison. Um, in our conversation last night on the Minutes to Bell Time um, discussion thread for Monday Night Raw, I believe I predicted this one correct? Yeah, sort of, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, we had. Uh, we had um, we, we had a nice nice back and forth match. Uh, in the, late in the proceedings, we had Sheamus tag himself in, land an Irish curse backbreaker on Styles, broke kick Miz's head off, attempt to do the same to Morrison, but missed, hit his good buddy McIntyre. Sheamus stood there stunned for a little while, which allowed just enough time for AJ to hit the phenomenal forearm for the win. Yeah, and then uh, I guess as uh, as Scots and Irishmen uh, do when uh, they have a difference, they just went at each other backstage. Until they find uh, some common ground. Which, yeah, last, then, night, which last night was uh, the backstage agent, Pat, I forget his last name, but uh, uh, the gentleman that was dressed like the fighting Irish mascot, who they decided to... <laughs> They decided to beat the hell out of and strip half naked and then go grab a pint afterwards. Yeah, that's Pat Buck. I believe that's Matt and Nick's uncle. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, McIntyre and Sheamus, they hashed it out. They were laughing after they gave uh, Pat Buck a wedgie and ripped off his jacket and shirt and uh, then went running. I, I, I'm sorry, I got really confused there for a second. This stream yard. It's fun, but it's, uh, I just did something I've never done before. Um, John Smith in the land of the hurt business. Uh, Kofi Kingston, uh, he, he got through one challenge. Uh, Cedric, MVP kind of said it perfectly when they were walking in the back. Like, oh, you're feeling yourself, aren't you, bro? Yeah, that's basically what it was. Kofi, uh, he did get his leg a little beat up by Shelton Benjamin with that ankle lock, but, uh, he was able to pull off the win. And then Cedric goes and, uh, challenges him to another match because he was feeling himself so bad. And, uh, didn't turn out as well for Kofi as it did in the first match, and Cedric actually gets a win over a former WWE champion. Yeah. Yeah, that is absolutely huge. It was, it was a lumbar check and done. One finisher, and uh, he knocked down, and that's not an easy thing to do to Kofi Kingston. Uh, and then Bobby Lashley, uh, he had a non-title match uh, with Jeff Hardy, which was, I thought was a very interesting matchup. And uh, 
According to Ryan Joy, I believe it went 14 minutes, he said this morning. Uh, so Jeff Hardy lasted a lot longer than uh, most people have against MVP's United States champion. Yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, you got to give Jeff some credit, though, because he is Jeff Hardy. He has been a around a while. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Bobby Lashley is still going to tap you out with the hurt lock one way or another, whether it takes five minutes, 13 minutes, or 20 minutes. I think he's pretty much unstoppable right now. Yeah, at the moment, uh, Matt Riddle, uh, he, he was chasing after him. He had some bro nuts. He wanted an MVP and Bobby Lashley to try. He ended up uh, back at ringside to help Jeff Hardy. Uh, to no avail. Uh, yeah, look for Matt Riddle and uh, and Bobby Lashley soon. I mean, that's a very intriguing mashup. Um, in the women's division, uh, in a match that uh, some people say should happen at WrestleMania, Asuka defeated Shayna Baszler uh, in a non-title match after a roll-up pin. Uh, Lana Hurricane Lana her way um, out of danger, being power bombed through the announce table. She's gone three weeks now. Splinter free, I guess, if you want to put it that way. Um, that caused a distraction that Oscar needed to roll up Shayna Baszler. Um, now, when you have a tag team championship match normally leading up to it, uh, you kind of fight in singles matches. So we had Oscar and Shayna Baszler. Uh, that happened already, which means Lana has to face her biggest fear and go one on one with big old 69 Nia Jax. <laughs> <laughs> Don Smith, you giggled louder. You was getting this one. Uh, um, I'm going with Nia Jax because Lana's saving that victory for when the belts are on the line. Yeah. All right, John the Connie, go for it. Hundred percent agree. Uh, Lana will maybe not, you know, not embarrass herself, but uh, her her big moment will come when there's something on the line. So give me Nia. All right, I, I'm going Lana by disqualification here. This is there's, there's no way. There's it's she Nia Jax is so frustrated and just so upset that she's she's eventually gonna snap. Like, Lana is just the bane of her existence right now. Uh, Dave is watching. I tried to reply to him. Uh, I don't know what the rules are. I gotta get my honest opinion on Raw. As long as you keep it clean, we'll see if we can throw it up there for you. you got about another two minutes uh, before we switch gears to SmackDown. Um, so I'm going uh, Lana winning via disqualification. Uh, hopefully Asuka can get her out of there before any serious damage happens. It's going to be an interesting championship match set for TLC. Uh, Ricochet, it was a mixed tag team match. Ricochet and Dana Brooke defeated Pillowcase and Tree Stump of Retribution after uh, Dana hit the DVD. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, like a DVD slam. I, I, is that like a Michinoku driver? Why am I blanking on what move that is? Yeah, that, that's what I called it. A, the fireman's carry Michinoku driver. Yeah. Uh, on me and Yim, uh, and, and uh, Mustafa Ali, uh, he has just not taking losing very well. This is two weeks in a row that me and Yim has been pinned uh, by Dana Brooke, and Mustafa Ali has just snapped Shane Thorne. Got a little bit uh, from his end as well. Uh, so you kind of say, what, what is, what's happening to Retribution already? So I guess maybe that's the question uh, to be continued. And the big takeaway that last night that was not mentioned on air, but for those of us that uh, follow along to uh, anything, you know, social media on Facebook or whatever, last night uh, was the last night at the Amway Center. Starting this Friday, SmackDown uh, will be at Tropicana Field, uh, home of the Tampa Bay Rays. Apparently, Orlando Magic need their arena back for the upcoming NBA season. Uh, so we're going to the baseball field. There's some pictures of uh, the set that they're putting together. They're going to have a Thunderdome set up. Oh, this is a big Thunderdome. <laughs> Tropicana Field is a pretty big place. Uh, but John Smith, uh, SmackDown opened up last week, uh, the opening promo. Uh, with Roman and Kevin Owens booking the Universal Championship match at TLC. Uh, Jey Uso would have to face consequences. Again, he, tried, he answered for Roman again, uh, and he, he, he just got to learn. He, he, you know, he's feeling himself a little bit too, which is great, but that's not what Roman wants. Yeah, well, Roman has taught him some respect at the end of the show, but, um, I mean, during that – 
during that interview, all he did was tell Kayla how stupid she was and how bad her questions were, and that was, yeah. that was pretty obnoxious. I think it worked well for his character. Oh, yeah, it was great. Uh, <laughs> you know, Jay accepted Owen's challenge. It ends up being Owens and um, Owens and Otis versus uh, K. Otis, we could call them. K. Otis. Team K. <laughs> Otis. Nice. Uh, I like it. You got them versus uh, Roman and and Jay, and then uh, <coughs> Roman DQ'd for for uh, throwing throwing the guillotine choke on KO. Then they start beating KO with the chairs. Then Roman starts beating Jay Uso with the chair to teach him a lesson for being out of line because he overstepped his boundaries there. Yeah, Roman Reigns is uh, he's. This is, this is great. I'm enjoying this, to tell you the truth. And he's just, he's obnoxious, not obnoxious, but he's just mean. He's just a deal. And it's it, it's working perfectly. I think a lot of people have been waiting for this out of Roman Reigns. And it's been, it's been working very well. Uh, yeah, John DeConi, uh, we lost Pat Patterson uh, last week. Um, and as a tribute to him, they actually took uh, six former Intercontinental champions and put him in a six man tag. Um, actually, five former and the current Intercontinental Champion, Sami Zayn. Uh, Pat Patterson, of course, uh, on a steamy night in Rio de Janeiro, uh, became the first ever Intercontinental Champion. And they actually had the belt at ringside that he won that night. And I've never seen that belt before. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. So before he did the match, as a belt aficionado, have you ever? I had seen pictures of that one. And, uh, you know, it's it's not too much different other than the red strap from the green strap. Of the one uh, your guy Tito had, or well, should have had until uh, Valentine broke it up against the side of the cage and whatnot. But yeah, that that, that is the, the classic old style where everything looks like it's uh, plates from a uh, a trophy shop, just kind of stuck to a leather strap. But yeah, that was a nice touch to see that at ringside before these six champs went at it. So uh, yeah, in the match, we have good. No, I was, I was gonna, gonna set you up. It was Daniel Bryan, Rey Mysterio, and Big E uh, versus Sami Zayn, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, and we had uh, we had about uh, we had about ten minutes or so of these six guys just showing us why they were uh, former workhorse champion belt holders. Uh, good match back and forth. Uh, then we had we had Sammy hit. Uh, excuse me, we had Sammy blind tag uh, and uh, get himself in there while D. Bry was in with Ziggler. Brian hit a running knee to knock Ziggler out of the ring, and Sammy tried to roll up. Uh, Brian countered that into almost a yes lock. Sammy got to the rope break. Uh, then we had a, a quick little chain of uh, pin attempts back and forth before Daniel Bryan was able to uh, sink in a small package and get the three count on Sammy. Then afterwards, we had Ziggler start some crap after the three faces were you know halfway up the uh, ramp, kind of called them back down. They obliged, came back down. Ziggler, you know, got with his guys and said, okay, let's get him. Took one step and let them take the beat and turned around, thought he was, uh, you know, doing doing himself well, kind of patting himself on the back. And his uh, his cohorts kind of each took uh, a shot or two and rolled out. And suddenly it was three on one. And Ziggy took uh, an atomic drop from Brian, 619 from Ray Ray, and the big end to teach him a lesson. You see, yeah, it's Dolph's got to stop doing that. He did that to Goldberg at SummerSlam two years ago, right? <laughs> um, in the rematch uh, from the week prior, Baron Corbin uh, got the the retribution, I guess, for lack of a better term, um, over Murphy. Uh, this Baron Cor Baron Corbin said he was going to come prepared, uh, and he did uh, with the services of Wesley Blake and is it Steve Cutler. Thanks. Not Jay Cutler, right? Jay Cutler was the quarterback. Uh, so Blake and Cutler, uh, who got he kind of forgot about them, wink, wink, hint, hint. Uh, they were uh, enlisted by Corbin. They jumped Ray and Dominic during the match, which led uh, led them uh, Murphy into the end of days finish. Uh, two things with this match, or actually three things. One uh, is that Blake and Cutler are now back. They're on SmackDown uh, with Corbin. Apparently, Jackson Riker showed up on the main event with Elias. <laughs> so I believe uh, that's done for the time being and to the point where Jackson Riker actually switched shows um, to be with Elias. Uh, second, you know, Blake and Murphy, former NXT Tag Team Champions. That's a little collect, uh, connection there uh, in that match. But um, I just want to talk about Turtle X for a second because almost, 
on Raw. He wears them all the time, nails them. Miz and Morrison are known for wearing turtlenecks. They nail them. Dominic Mysterio needs to try again, I think. You, no, you, John Smith, you like the completely, what was that, lavender? Ugh, With nothing over it but a chain? Salmon. <laughs> <laughs> He totally looked ridiculous. He needs to put on some weight if he's going to be wearing a, a tight shirt. You, you, put, you put something over the turtle. You know, wear, wear the jacket, like almost, or like Miz and Moore. You don't just wear it with the, the necklace. Um, They're all chasing the rock. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, that was a sweater. That was a short sweater. But, the, but then also with Ray and Dominic, you know, just like, here comes Murphy holding hands with Aaliyah down the aisle. And then Ray and Dominic, like, they follow them on dates, too. It's weird how this mysterious relationship <laughs> going with those. So um, hopefully Murphy and Aaliyah can, you know, get some alone time together. Uh, Sasha Banks and Carmella spit some fire, quote unquote, uh, with some promos backstage uh, to lead to their match for TLC. And then the, the Italian defeated Bailey with the sharpshooter. Uh, ding dong. Hello. You tapped again. Like she's been so tap happy lately. Uh, Bailey's got to get out of this little funk that she's in. Gentlemen, we're going to bid you adieu again. Um, we will bring you back in for Winter is Coming, which we're going to main event our show. We're going to bring Ryan Joy in from minutes to bell time .com. There's Ryan, and I did the graphics thing wrong again. Let me get this off here. Ryan, how are you today, pal? Very good, very good. I want to tell you a, a quick story about um, my Friday night. I'm there watching SmackDown as my wife takes a nap on the couch. She wakes up out of a dead sleep and says, what is is Dominic wearing? <laughs> you know, Who I don't dread this boy. Is what she said. Yeah, like even like right now, like, it's not a turtleneck, but I like this. I like to keep my neck. I'm, I'm a firm believer in the winter. If you keep your neck warm, you'll never get sick. I there always warm. People can attest to that, but they, you got to wear something over it. You know, you can't just go out <laughs> with a, especially a lavender colored turtleneck. Anyway, I'll, I'll be the first to say it. I don't know how to fix the problem, but I sure could recognize it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Ryan Joy, talk New Japan to me, pal. We got two huge tournament finals. Uh yeah. the Best of Super Juniors and the World Tag League. Yeah, big weekend. Uh starts with Friday morning, 4 a.m. We have World Tag League and Best of Super Juniors. We'll start off with the World Tag League. Um, David Finley and Juice Robinson and the Gorillas of Destiny are wrestling in the World Tag League finals. Um they are basically rerunning a program that they did last year about this time. So these guys fought over the titles earlier in the year. They're going to fight over uh, the World Tag League Championship now and then most likely face the champions, Sabre and Tai Chi, at Wrestle Kingdom, whoever comes out the winner. That's Friday morning. Also Friday morning main eventing that same show is the Best of the Super Junior Finals. And that is a matchup between Hiromu Takahashi there on the left and El Desperado there on the right. They got to this point by winning the most matches in the Best of Super Juniors uh, nine-match tournament. And uh, they also got they got the same point score as Taiji Ishimori, the current champion, but uh, they had both beat him in the tournament, so he doesn't get to, to compete in the finals. So they faced the, the, the finals this Friday. Uh, again, there's no surefire stipulation that says they wrestle at Wrestle Kingdom, but that's the common common belief if they win. Right, well, then who, who you got in this one? I have a hard time betting against the Gorillas of Destiny, and then uh, Takahashi's LIJ. I'm going to go with him every every day of the week in that division. So who, who in your expert opinion? Hiromu Takahashi for the best of the Super Juniors. I think he's, he's sort of the franchise guy for that uh, weight class. And on the other side, I'm going to go Juice and Finley. Uh, I think they were pushing them last year and had to change some plans based on the pandemic, and I think they just want to get back on track. So I think I'll pick them here, but G.O.D. is going to be all up in their business for the next, you know, however long they have, you know. Between Tai Chi and Sabre and those two teams, they're going to be fighting each other for their, the next six months probably. Yeah. Yeah, they get grilled to destiny. They're just they're just one of the best tag teams in the world. I would, I would love to get them on more mainstream TV. Uh, but yeah. they, their style fits so well over New Japan. It, it's, it's It does. Awesome. And, and Tamatanga is a good singles wrestler, but he's actually actively stayed, stepped away from singles competition because he enjoys tag competition. So Yeah. Well, who doesn't like tagging with their brother? 
Um, and then we have uh, Chris Bay has a busy night on Saturday night. As we discussed earlier, when Tony Capone and Marina Tucker were on, uh, that Chris Bay is going to be challenging Rich Swan for the Impact Heavyweight Championship. But uh, he's going to go Rick Rude on us. He's actually going to try to win a tournament as well. Yeah, it's Saturday is the Chris Bay holiday. Uh, we have him on Impact Show, and then you have him here in the Super J Cup, and you can see he has Clark Connors in the opening round. Clark Connors is a young lion, so chances are pretty good. They don't usually win matches. Chris Bay will probably advance there. Um, and then also in the tournament, you can see right across ACH and TJP, Ray Horace, Blake Christians, uh, El Fantasmo, and Leo Rush. This is a multi-brand, multi-company tournament um the best it, it's it's like an international best of the super junior one night tournament um and el phantasmo won last last year but man he's got leo rush in the first round that should be a killer killer match yeah it's good to see leo rush back there i know uh ach uh had some issues glad to see him back there the ach tjp match has me the most intrigued um, in that first round, and then whoever like I said, if, if you're right, and a lot of times you are right, you know, Chris Bay advances. Uh, the winner that versus Chris Bay is going to be amazing, and then Leo Rush potentially in the finals. Like this, you're going to get some really great wrestling here out of these eight guys. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, you've got New Japan represented here. You got Ring of Honor represented here. You got Impact represented here. Independent Circuit, uh, GCW, tons of tons of brands. So should be a good night. And then uh, Major League Wrestling has a big championship match uh, coming tomorrow night, I believe, as well. They're at 7 o'clock on yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, right? tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. This is the, the show that you put on while you're, like, fixing dinner that you're going to watch during Dynamite or whatever. You put on this and, and relax, and you can have a, a tag team title match tomorrow. Uh, the Von Erichs of the famous Von Erich family will be defending the tag team titles against Jacob Fatu and Simon Gotch. Uh, Fatu is currently the MLW World Champion, and he is – part of the Samoan dynasty. So should he win here? I have been saying he's going to be threatening Roman's head of the table position. <laughs> I, I'm just more shocked that Simon Gotch is back. I, I haven't heard that name in so long. And I kind of took that name sounds from, Oh, Simon Gotch. That's right. The Vaude villain. Yeah. You know, he, <laughs> he left WWE and almost directly went to, to MLW. So he's been there. Okay. Ever since. Yeah. All right, so sounds good. That's a great lineup uh, this weekend for New Japan. Uh, that tournament is going to be uh, gangbusters, going to be a fun weekend. Um, yeah. And we're going to bring back in John Smith and John the Connie. We won't take our nameplates off here. Well, you don't need to get them off. That tournament starts at 10 p.m. So uh, as you're finishing up your final resolution, you can start thinking about how you're going to watch that. All right, sounds good. Um, now, Ryan uh, – we're going to give you a chance to speak here, and you're going to talk a little bit about the match because you were there um, at Winter is Coming in Jacksonville. Uh, Kenny Omega, uh, you got the job done. Uh, first things first, he became the third ever uh, AEW world champion. Yeah, he did. <clears throat> um, it was it was a good match. It was a long match. Um, I was I was surprised I, when I first when I was watching the match. Good match all the way through. Then it kind of got it got garbagey towards the end with a lot of interference and stuff like that. Um, and had we not ended up in this situation with the crossover and everything, I think I would have been really dissatisfied with a microphone shot for the for the win. But um, it was a it was a really really good atmosphere in the arena that night. About a thousand people, um, socially distant. Everybody everybody was really looking forward. It. Eyes were glued on the ring that whole match. Oh, I'm sure. I said it was the microphone shot, uh, the microphone that Don Callis dropped in the ring. Again, you, you said it perfectly. He was right in front of our face this entire time, and he kind of just didn't think, ah, well, he's just okay. Right now, Impact's not going to, you know, what are they going to do with Impact? Yeah. You know, what are they gonna, sick giant swinger on freaking Moxley, you know? So, but it's absolutely great that they're doing this. Uh, like I said, it was the microphone. Uh, to the head, and he kind of just felt it. You know, Kenny started going away. I'm like, oh my god, this is the end of Moxley. And then, yeah. boom, one winged angel, done and done. Um, and like I said, the rest is history. They hightailed it, and we'll we'll see tonight. So that's gonna uh, go into tonight's impact. Uh, start probably in about you know 35 minutes. So we'll try to wrap up here as quickly 
so everybody can uh, get a chance to uh, get yourself ready for that. Uh, but then that wasn't that wasn't the only story of the night. Uh, and I, like I said, it's it's funny. You wouldn't think Sting would be overshadowed, but he kind of was. But uh, I guess we could call Sting Winter, right, Ryan? Yeah. So after Darby and Cody won their match, Team Taz was putting that beat down pretty hard. Um, and you know, you start seeing the locker room empty. You know, you got Dustin Rhodes coming out, you got Brian Cage coming out, and Team Taz is still on top. And then the lights go out, and you knew something was going to happen with the lights. The lights go out. So you start the, the the crowd's already starting to rumble. Then you have this Game of Thrones style movie type of picture coming across the screen, and you know we're all very interested because it's a cool looking uh, video. And then the word Sting comes out, and instantly everybody that was sitting, boom, was on their feet, and it was a roar in Jacksonville that night. the the mo The biggest pop I've heard since I've been going to those AEW shows, and it was the eighth one I've been to in the last three months so yeah incredible to be there it's you were saying that. It, it, it was funny because arn anderson was the one that started that whole bleep show in the ring after the what the hell is arn doing uh you know which led to everybody else coming out but uh yeah everybody uh like i said i, I i'm not as the guy i laughed hysterically at it last it's funny you know i mentioned lars sullivan all of a sudden he shows up the next week i was just staying all of a sudden I, I can't believe I, the, the week after i did, did that but it's like, i'm not a sting guy but you know what? Like I said, I know who he is. I know everybody loves him. So I'm not going to sit here and be the uh, the Buzz Killington on this story. Guys, congratulations. You got your sting back. Uh, and as Travis posted on uh, Facebook the other day, you know, my answer to sting is when I get Eva Marie back. So don't worry about me. I will be okay. Uh, but as far as this uh, Wednesday, as far as tomorrow night, uh, Tony Schiavone, this is going to be one of the two interviews that he's doing. Uh, he's going to sit down with the Stinger. Uh, so that's funny. Now, Sting can be very quiet, very mysterious, lurking in the rafters, staring at people like he did last Wednesday. And then there's the other Sting that doesn't shut the hell up. So we got that Sting probably coming this Wednesday uh, as he sits down with Tony Schiavone. Uh, you know, one thing, Al, Tony Khan came out after the show, and he said those exact words. Congratulations, you've got your Sting back. There you go. So it's <laughs> not my cup of tea, but it doesn't mean that tea doesn't get enjoyed. So there you go. You yeah. guys got your thing back. Uh, I got my Jersey girl in AEW. I'm excited. John the County, they mentioned Hillsborough, New Jersey, about a million times it seemed like when Layla Hirsch is mad with Britt Baker. So I'm excited. She didn't get the job done. Uh, Britt Baker with the lockjaw uh, for the win. So I'm sold. I have my Jersey girl in AEW. Uh, check that box her. for me. I want to uh, see her in, in Taz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taz, it's the female Taz. It's the female Taz. Yeah, it's the female Taz. That's exactly it. Uh, John Smith, kudos to you. So here we go. So we kind of, uh, and that this is my fault. I didn't real. I didn't watch the the Dynamite Diamond Battle Royal last year. I did not know the two uh, last people in would actually fight in a singles match the following week. I ran. I believe you mentioned it on one of your shows, and I just didn't register to me. Uh, but John Smith, um unintentionally actually picked both guys. So, you know, he originally picked MJF, and then he changed his pick to Orange Cassidy, and literally, you know, he was right twice. So um, they're going to get at it tonight for for the uh, Dynamite Diamond ring. Um, Again, we don't know the rules. If they're going to present a new one, if uh, MJF has to give him up, if he loses, uh, who knows what they're going with this. A um, little bit of chicanery in the Battle Royal between MJF and Sammy Guevara. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, John Smith, are you going to stay with your pick of Orange Cassidy? I am going to stay with Orange Cassidy. I think maybe Sammy will. Sammy Guevara is going to cost MJF the match. Okay, Ryan Joy. I think it's going to be the opposite. I think actually Inner Circle is going to come together and. Help MJF win the match. Yeah, it, 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 I'm I'm kind of leaning that way as well. This it really the placement of where the uh, the ultimatum is, and it was it throws up right now the inner circle ultimatum. Uh, they got into a huge argument with each other after the battle royal, and then after the Chris Jericho Frankie Kazarian match. So John Deconi, I guess this is the, 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 the placement of this ultimatum um, affect who you're taking in the battle royal. 
Yeah, yeah, I believe it does. I, just because I think uh, you didn't bring Wardlow and uh, MJF in to disband completely this quickly. I, at least I hope not. So I'm going to go with MJF. Yeah, I'm going to go with MJF as well. Yes, you guys got to start helping. Like I said, this happens before that battle royal, uh, and Jericho tells him, you know, you know, shape up or we're we're done. Maybe it's not Sammy. Maybe it's like Santana. Santana doesn't have a problem with MJF. I know Ortiz hates him. But um, anyway, so uh, the final tally for winter is coming. Uh, Tyler and I nailed it. Uh, John DeConi and Ryan Joy both won three and one. John Smith, although correctly predicting uh, both finals in the Battle Royal, unfortunately that had to be taken out uh, because, you know, there was no one winner, I guess. Bonus points. Uh, we didn't want to delay it for the week, so maybe we can throw some bonus points John Smith's way um, if Orange Cassidy gets it done tomorrow night. Uh, like I said, Tyler and I, we nailed it, so we took the lead uh, in the perfect pay-per-view standings. Um, the difference between me and Tyler, I guess if you look at me, those are all Wednesday show, two Wednesday shows and a Tuesday show. I have yet to hit an actual pay-per-view. Perfect. Tyler at least got payback right. So... Uh, Staying with AEW, yeah. I'm sorry. What was that? Yeah, you don't you don't have the total standings handy yet. Do you still do you? I don't have them on. I could probably uh, no, I don't have them up right now. But uh, I mean, I just wanted to gloat that I'm above you. That's all. You are above you. you <laughs> did pass. War Games got you past me. The men's War Games match, the Undisputed Era. Uh, they leap. They leapfrog me. So I am now in third place. Um, also. Uh, Coming on uh, this Wednesday night, we got the Young Brooks and the Hybrid 2. They had a little bit of an altercation backstage uh, involving the Acclaimed as well. That was the first time I've ever seen them. Um, I just, you know, I didn't really like, I mean, maybe maybe I'm just not into, you know, the, the rapping scene uh, that the kids are listening to nowadays. But uh, Don DeCani, uh Young Bucks and the Hybrid, we got on this one. Yeah, I I think uh, is this a title match? Uh, this I is a do not believe so. Right, it's a non-title match with the promise that if they beat them, they can have a title match. So I think somewhere along the lines, whether it's uh, uh, Top Flight coming out and attacking TH2, giving them the disqualification win, or if it's the Acclaimed getting involved and actually costing the Bucks uh, a pinfall, I think TH2 wins so that then they get their title shot. Yeah, I, I, I'm a Lucha Underground guy. I love Evans. I love Angelico. I am a TH2 guy. Them and the Lucha Bros on my team. Like, this is all heart, no thought. I am going with the hybrid, too. John Smith? I'm going with the champs on this one. I think the Bucks take it. All right. Ryan Joy? TH2. And the acclaim is just a little bit better when there's music behind the rap. So, oh. Thanks. Stay tuned. Yeah, I'm saying, you know, I know Dark's seven hours long, so I just I don't haven't had the heart to sit down and, and watch them. So, <laughs> um, Tony Schiavone is also uh, talking with a bad, bad man, uh, just talking about Shaq. Uh, so he's going to speak on TNT. So they said Schiavone's got Sting, then he's got Shaq. Then it might as well be Shaft. He's talking to uh, people with one name that begin with S. <laughs> I guess uh, Shaft will work as well. Uh, Dustin Rhodes, uh, he's got a, a big match with 10. Uh, this is completely random. Ryan Joy, who do you got in this one? 10. All Dark right. Water okay, there you go. John, John Smith. Um, I'm going with Dustin on this one. All right, John DeConi. Yeah, give me Dustin for no reason. <laughs> yeah, I got no reason. This is completely just a... Uh, Random. I don't know. Unless there is a dark order thing that's going on here that I'm not well aware of. But all right, Ryan Joy staying with 10. So you got Preston Vance. There you go. Um Abaddon will be in action. Um, I believe in action is 0 and 13 in dynamite history. So we'll just uh save everybody the time and the effort here. I'm assuming we are all on Abaddon, correct? Yes. Yeah. All right, and then FTR, uh, they're going to have a match with the Varsity Blondes, uh, which is the team comprised of Griff Garrison and Brian Pillman Jr. Uh, I, I, I get the Hollywood Blondes reference with Brian Pillman. Is there a, uh, a Varsity squad 
reference with Griff Garrison? Am I, miss, am I missing something here, Ryan? Well, the Griff Garrison, they keep referring to him being a going to like an Ivy school or something like that. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Well, who do you got on this one? FDR. I'm going to agree with that. John McConney. Absolutely. FDR. All right. John Smith. Yeah, give me the Crevival. <laughs> and then the last match of what seems like a very stacked dynamite. Um, there's going to be a six-man tag. Uh, Lance Archer, who has no friends, is going to team up with the Lucha Brothers. Uh, they're going to take on Ken Eddie Kingston, the Butcher, and the Blade. Uh, they got in as a uh, Kingston and Archer. They got into it, I believe, two weeks ago. Or uh, just whatever it was. They just do not like each other. Stemming back to Ryan Joy's uh, Casino Battle Royal Beef. Uh, John DeCani. I'm sorry, John Smith. Uh, you got Eddie Kingston. I know you're a fan of but I know your Pentagon's your new best friend here. So what's a good yeah. one to do? Um, this, is, this is a hard one to pick. It's the coin flip. I don't know where they're going with it, but um, I don't know. Eddie Kingston seems to be getting the most push of anybody right now. But, I mean, I you got to give Lance Archer the victory. I'm going with Lance Archer. I like your style. I'm going to agree with that as well. John McConney? Yeah, I don't think you put – Lance together with the Lucha Bros because it doesn't make much sense if you're not going to put them over. So give me uh, Archer and the Lucha Bros. All right, Ryan Joy. I think Archer beats up Phoenix and Eddie pins him. Hmm. Yeah, okay, there you go. Yeah, Archie, he doesn't seem like Archer plays well with others. Yeah, no, he's not a team player. No, no, he's 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 the 2020 version of Bad News Brown. And why yeah. is Pac in this match? Yeah, I, well, Archer's yeah, got the fear exactly. of Kingston. I, yeah, that's you'd think Pac would be in this as well because Pac doesn't like Kingston either. So, I think um, for a so uh, an hour, an hour and thirty-five minutes. Okay, I, I can I can ramble on for about five minutes here. So, uh, here, uh, as we all heard uh, last night or yesterday, uh, the announcement broke. Uh, Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins they had their baby. Um, there you go. There he's got his man shirt on there. There we go for Becky Lynch. Uh, like I said, you, you go from, from horrible news to losing Pat Patterson to great news um, that uh, there, a new baby is now in the wrestling family. So, you know, circle of life uh, at its finest. Um, so with the arrival of, of baby Rue, um, let's look at the updated uh, WrestleMania card for WrestleMania 61. Again, this is taking place um, – uh, April 2nd, the year 2045. Um, as you can see, this is the 22nd year that NXT um, is actually going to be the you know the company running WrestleMania, the showcase of the Immortals. That, of course, came from uh, Triple H, Stephanie, and the new authority. Uh, they won the Civil War where NXT defeated the WWE and took over the company. Um, plus, SoFi Stadium, um, they're going to play host. Uh, this year, since they were unable to do so way back in 2020 during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, this will be the last ever event at SoFi Stadium as it's completely outdated. Um, and the new football stadium, which will be the home for all four Los Angeles football teams, will open <laughs> in September. <laughs> so here we go. This is the first match we have. We have Ro, uh, Rue Rollins right there. This is for the NXT Women's Tag Team Championship. She's going to have a mystery partner. Um, as they challenge the Phoenix sisters, uh, the champions, Lyric and Ruby Phoenix, um, Rollins, of course, uh, will be accompanied by NXT legend Joel Reigns. And rumors are flying around now that AEW has finally went out of business. You know, they've been in shambles for years now. They finally went out of business. That baby Ambrose uh, might be making their uh, NXT debut to reform the Shield here. Uh, so that could be fun. But then again, that's how rumors started. Uh, we will be keeping you posted on Baby Ambrose. Um, also on that card in the Men's NXT Tag Team Championship back, uh, Wolfgang and Bart Hardy will defend their NXT Tag Team Championships against the Bella Cousins, Matteo Bello and Buddy Bryan. So that will be a fun match as well. Uh, we have a potential uh, intergender match with Carver Canellis uh, along with his sister, Freddie. Uh, they're going to take on uh, Baby Rowe. Uh, who has yet to be confirmed uh, whether it's going to be a boy or a girl. So this could be intergender. Um, and it is a shame that after all these years in NXT that the Canel uh, the Bennett family still can't use their last name. They have to go by Canellis. Um, in a match uh, years in the making, 
Uh, the Wyatts and the Orange are going to get back at it in a House of Horrors match as Hyrie Wyatt takes on the Vipress Brooklyn Orton. Uh, so you can see this feud is uh, still far from over. Um, and then there's actually going to be a huge match that will have ramica ramifications felt throughout the wrestling world as uh, Aurora and Murphy Helmsley, um, they have had enough of their little sister Vaughn uh, getting way of their plans and running NXT. So Aurora and Murphy Helmsley have enlisted the longest reigning female intercontinental champion in Madison Mazanin uh, to take on Vaughn Helmsley. And if Vaughn loses, she will have to relinquish her 33% share of NXT to her older sisters. Um, obviously, this is a non-title match. There's more on the line. But it's still pretty cool to see uh, the Intercontinental Championship uh, remain relevant in the women's division after Charlotte Flair defeated Johnny Gargano to become the second female Intercontinental Champion of all time and then declared that the title will stay in the women's division going forward. Uh, so that would be fun. Um, problem in the Reigns family, uh, a tables match between the two sets of Reigns twins. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, 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 the wise one is fighting over the head of the table. Uh, so uh, they're going to have a tables match. Um, NXT Hall of Famer Roman Reigns told the kids that this was the way they had to settle it. Uh, so that that completely that family just completely blew up. Um, and it is pretty crazy. That is true. Roman Reigns is actually a father of two sets of twins, twin boys. Twins, twin boys. Um, and then... There's uh, rivalries in professional wrestling that just transcend time. And for the third time uh, in the past five years, uh, this epic rivalry will take center stage and co-main event uh, WrestleMania as uh, Bertie Bryan will challenge Monroe Mazan for the NXT Women's Championship. Um, and a feud that just constantly just circles back to itself. Uh, these two just can't seem to uh, stay away from each other. Uh, I don't remember who won the first two matches, but I remember their match at WrestleMania 57 was uh, absolutely legendary, and it didn't make my top 30 list. And then, of course, uh, in the main event, uh, the one that we've all been waiting for, uh, the Pat Patterson Memorial Royal Rumble winner, Nash Wyatt. Um, he will challenge NXT champion King Maxwell Hardy and uh, what people are saying could be the match for the ages. And as always, the Essential Wrestling Podcast WrestleMania Weekend Special will be the Saturday before WrestleMania 61 um, at 3 p.m. Again, that is on April 1st, 2045, right here on all of the Eastern Observer Networks. <laughs> Episode 4058. <laughs> Congratulations to Seth and Becky. We are happy for you. All right, on to uh, my – actually, current WrestleMania. Here we go. We're going we're gonna to cut this short. I know I spent a lot of time screwing around with that. Uh, my number 16 favorite WrestleMania match of all time. This was in the hearts um, of a lot of people, especially after the passing of Eddie Guerrero, when Rey Mysterio won the World Heavyweight Championship for the first time. This was an absolutely amazing triple threat match with champion Kurt Angle, and uh, Randy Orton got involved as well. Um, the whole thing, Ray won the Royal Rumble, then Randy won uh, the championship match from him at No Way Out getting, uh, and gaining injury in the match. Teddy let Ray be in it anyway. Uh, this was Kurt Angle's last WrestleMania before he left for TNA. Um, absolutely great match, absolutely great moment uh, that when Ray Mysterio won the World Heavyweight Championship in memory of Eddie Guerrero. Um, something that no one, none of us really will ever forget. So... On to the giveaway. If you'd like to win this Jim the Anvil Lionheart autograph picture, courtesy of Sideline Sports and Memorabilia, all you have to do is go to this video on YouTube. Uh, the link, if you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, the link should be attached to the post. Hit the subscribe button, RKO that notification bell, and comment on this video with hashtag EWP Anvil. Uh, we will be announcing the winner at 200 subscribers. So we're keeping the bar low. Make sure you stay tuned for when we are announcing the winner. Uh, the Primetime Rundown, powered by StreamYard with Joey Jarzenka, Ian Schreier, and Rob DeLuca, is now airing at 6 p.m. on Friday nights. And as I mentioned at the top of our show, uh, the Eastern Observer and the I-95 Sports Network, we are all over the place now. Not just YouTube, not just Facebook. We are on Spotify. 
We are on Google Podcasts. We are on Apple Podcasts. Uh, we are expanding. We are excited. Uh, and it's not just this show. It is every show on the Eastern Observer, which is going to include uh, next Wednesday's show of the Eastern Observer. What is, right? There you go. The Eastern Observer uh, interview series. Uh, with Ken Daniels of the Detroit Red Wings. He is their uh, television broadcaster. That is Wednesday, December 16th at 8 p.m. Uh, for more information, you can go to the easternobserver.com. All right, make sure you tune into the Daily Wrestling News Show every Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. We are having a lot of fun on this show. Ryan is doing an absolutely amazing job. Uh, John, John, and myself, along with his uh, your cousin Travis. Yeah, Travis, uh, who who did an AEW show what, last week, he's going to be joining us uh, as a as part of the rotation here in the coming weeks. Uh, not this week, but maybe starting next week. Yeah, so and you had Tony Capone, uh, our guest today. You had him on this morning as well. So uh, we are having a lot of fun. Ryan brings us the news in our morning cup of joy, um, and then he hits us with trivia, which has been getting harder and harder. Uh, so I am not <laughs> looking forward to my questions this Thursday. You're still uh, eight for Ryan, ten now. Yeah, Ryan has a book right now called The Wins and Losses. Uh, please go to thewinsandlosses.com uh, for your $10 pre-order for the holidays. The Black Cat's Free Cake uh, was released on November 13th. Uh, make sure you go to all of these uh, – what, what are they called? Music outlets. There you go. It's called Matt Spotify, Pandora, Amazon Music. Uh, to make sure you get the Black Cats NYC and their album Free Cake. Should have took the AEW graphic off. I have to do that WrestleMania thing all over again because I don't like the AEW graphic on it. Considering I said they went out of business. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure you join us back here next week um, at 6 p.m. Uh, to discuss what we're thinking is going to be uh, a crazy week starting tonight. Again, AEW World Champion Kenny Omega, the new world champion. Uh, he's going to be on impact. Um, what was <laughs> never bet against the Mazana on a pay per view? I like Tempe Smith, John the I believe that's your friend, right? Tempe Smith, I like her yes, style. Absolutely. Yeah. Never bet, that's it. He's never bet against the on a pay per view. So, uh, thank you so much. Uh, ooh, wrong graphic. Thank you very much on joining us today. Um, Anything, John Smith, King Kong Bundy? I got he took a nap. Uh, there he is, right there. John Smith, anything else you want to say before we head out of here? Uh, no, just uh, looking forward to seeing some crossover action tonight. I uh, got to get the figure out how to you do Twitch on my TV. <laughs> John the County. Ah, congrats on your first big interview, and uh, we own the night. Yeah, we. We own, yeah, we own we own we own the afternoon matinee. Impact will always own the night. Brian Roy. <laughs> hey, the uh, the trivia scores are eight and eight for you and you and John Smith. So uh, keep studying. Yeah, and right. John DeCon he's he's gonna be go up this morning. We'll leave John's uh, score um, anonymous at the moment. Alexa Bliss, we love you. <laughs> Keegan Knox, we miss you very much. We hope you are doing well. Uh, we can't wait to see you back in the ring soon. John the County, take it home. Joining us, and as always, we wish you the best in all your future endeavors. <laughs>